Hello and welcome back to Gapey's Garden. It's time for our annual tomato tour. We've got quite a few tomatoes this year. We've got, I think, 19 different varieties, not including any volunteers that came up. And only two varieties are ones that I've grown before and the rest are all new to me. So we had a pretty crazy weather year this year and we had a really late spring. We had lots of wet and cold temperatures. So everything was off to a pretty late start and then we got hit with some pretty hot temperatures. Now things are starting to go back to normal and we're starting to see some ripe tomatoes finally. So some of the tomatoes did pretty well while others not so much. So let's go around and take a look and see how they're doing. This one here is probably the most fun variety I've grown in a really long time. It's called San Marzano Rederita, and every time I post a picture of these, people think that these are peppers. They are shaped pretty much like a pepper, so um, it's no surprise, but they are a fun shape, and they're a sauce tomato, so it's a San Marzano type, um, and it is very, very tasty. I've only harvested one of these so far. I'm trying to save these up for making a sauce. And the inside is kind of mealy, but it has a really, really good flavor. And the one tomato that I've harvested had absolutely zero seeds. So I'm hoping I can get some seeds off of some of these because I would like to save them to grow again. This is probably the more productive of the larger size tomatoes that I'm growing this year. So this one has exceeded the height of the the tomato cage. I'm not sure if any of these taller stems are going to produce any fruit. It's a little late in the season, but there are some flowers up here. We've got some tomatoes here that are pretty close to the top, so those might have time to ripen. But it seems to be a pretty fairly productive variety, so I'm really excited about this one. Now this variety kind of looks like a cherry tomato. It is supposed to be the Thorburns terracotta but this is definitely not what it is supposed to look like. So I'm not sure what variety this is. I wasn't really thrilled about this one. It didn't really have that great of flavor. It was kind of bland. So I'm definitely not gonna save seeds or grow this one again, but I do have some other seeds from a different source of the Thorburns. So I'm gonna try growing it again next year. This one here is a plum variety. I grew a few plum varieties this year. It's called Blush Tiger. It does have some cracking there, but this one is surprisingly tasty. I was kind of surprised at how good this one tasted. It did not get very tall though. It's only about halfway up the cage and not a whole lot of tomatoes. I've only harvested a few so far, but I'm going to be harvesting the rest of these here pretty soon. This here is the speckled Roman and I was actually pretty disappointed with this one. It was the first tomato to actually set fruit, which is probably why it didn't do so well. I probably shouldn't have let it set fruit so early, but all we've got are these two tomatoes here, and then we've got one more that's still green up here, and that is it. I did harvest one of them also, and I wasn't too thrilled with the flavor of it either, so I probably won't grow that one again. Now the only variety that was less productive than that one is the Lava Flow. This one only has two tomatoes on the entire plant and it looks like this one is pretty moldy so I'm not even going to try that one. This one is going to go to the chickens. Um, so there's only one tomato left and um, I haven't tasted it yet so I don't know if this is going to be any good or not but hopefully that one will ripen and I'll get to at least try one. This one is my only hybrid that I'm growing this year. It's called Verona, and it is supposed to be an improved Juliet. And Juliet is a very popular kind of a small paste tomato like this. I grew Juliet, I think last year, and I was pretty happy with it. This one is not growing quite as tall as the Juliet, and it could be the weather this year, I'm not sure. But I do find it very similar to Juliet. Um, maybe slightly smaller. I'll have to grow them both in the same season and compare them and see how that goes. Now this is probably the largest variety I'm growing this year. This one is called pineapple. So the outside is kind of a light to medium orange 
and the inside is really absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a bicolor of yellow and orange and it is also really really tasty so I was really happy with this one however uh, it wasn't that productive so I've harvested one and there's only two tomatoes left and I don't think it's going to produce any more unfortunately. This is the last of the larger sized tomatoes. This one is the Ananas Noir and the inside of this one is absolutely gorgeous. You've probably seen photos of it. A lot of people grill this one pretty much because it's just beautiful. And it's actually pretty tasty too. So this one is cracking a little bit, but this one is ripe. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this one and show you what the inside looks like. Not sure if you can see it, but there is a lot of ash on this tomato because we've had a lot of wildfires nearby. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash this off before I cut into it because this is not really safe to eat with all this ash on it. I'm gonna cut this lengthwise because that is probably what's gonna be the most beautiful colored. Look at that. There's some green and some yellow in there and then some nice dark pinkish red. Really pretty tomato and lots of seeds. So we're gonna save some of those. Well, we might as well take a bite while we have it cut open. Really juicy, really great flavor. Very sweet. I don't know what to say about it. It's just a really, really tasty tomato. You don't really taste the seeds. I could eat that whole thing. Maybe later. All right, let's have a look at the two tomatoes we have growing in the greenhouse. I usually plant two varieties in the greenhouse in different areas and this year I planted it right near the door on the left side and this is one that I've been growing every year for the past probably five or six years now. This one is called Fortunia and it's a very large Italian paste tomato so I've gotten these up to close to two pounds I think. I can't remember what the the largest one I had last year is but but this one is a really big variety and it's a great sauce tomato, very little seeds, and in fact last year none of my Fortunia tomatoes put out any seeds at all. So I'm hoping I at least get some seeds this year because I am running low on seeds. But it's a really very large variety and pretty productive too. And it tastes really good. Can't forget that. And then the one next to it I think is also an Italian paste tomato. This is one I haven't grown before called Mama Leone and it's growing kind of interesting. It's got this huge row of or vine of tomatoes. Not even sure how many tomatoes are on it, but this vine is really long and just loaded with tomatoes. However, I'm not really that excited about the the flavor of this tomato. It's very mealy, definitely a sauce tomato. I wouldn't probably use it for anything else because it's just really kind of mealy and mushy inside. So I'm sure it would make a great sauce tomato, but it's not really very dual purpose. So I don't think I would use it for um, anything else really, but it is an interesting tomato. Now the last seven varieties are over in this bed and they're all cherry tomato varieties. Um, most of them are doing pretty good, but some of them not so much. So this one here is called Ananas Blue and I've harvested a total of one tomato off of this one. Now this one is just starting to ripen, but most of these, they're just not ripening. They're still very green on the bottom. They should be getting, I think, kind of a reddish color. Actually, maybe it's yellow. I, I can't even remember the one that I harvested, what it looked like, but this one looks like it's turning yellow. Um, but everything else on here is still very green and small. So this one just took forever to ripen. This is the other tomato variety that I've grown before and I've been growing for many, many years. This is the Berries Crazy Cherry. It's a super productive variety, really tasty, nice, pretty yellow tomatoes. But for some reason this year, I'm not that excited about it. I did use a different seed source than I normally grow. So I'm definitely not gonna save seeds from this one and I'm gonna go back to growing the one I, I normally grow. But this one is just not growing as well. It's only about halfway up the tomato cage, which is very unusual for this variety, at least the one I've grown before. I am seeing some bent over branches, so maybe that is causing it to be a little bit stunted. 
Uh, and also the flavor isn't as good as it normally is. So a little disappointed with this one this year, but I'll still grow my old seeds again next year. This one is called Dark Orange Muscat, and it's kind of a dusty orange kind of color. And it's a medium sized tomato and it's pretty productive compared to a lot of the other tomatoes I'm growing this year. It's a really tasty tomato. It's a little bit slower to ripen than some of the other cherry tomatoes, but it's a really good one. And it's fairly firm. I haven't noticed much splitting on this one. The skin is fairly thick, but it's not really chewy, so it's pretty good texture. This is the only green tomato variety I'm growing this year, and I haven't really had a green tomato that I've really enjoyed, and this is no exception. These tomatoes are really hard to tell when they're ripe. A lot of the green tomatoes, they might turn a different shade of green, but this one, I can't even, I can't really tell, and they're, they're even really firm. So this one is, you can see it split, but it's still really firm, so I don't know if this is supposed to be ripe or if it's split prematurely, but I'm really not a fan of this one at all. And I've also had several tomatoes drop on the ground. So these ones are mostly going to the chickens because I don't really like the flavor and I can't tell when they're ripe. So here you go, Molly. Molly, you'll eat it. Here's one for you too. <laughs> Watch your step, Barry. This tomato here is one of my most productive. It's called Supernova. It's kind of a very small plum kind of paste tomato. And I almost didn't grow this one this year. Um, the seedlings were very, very kind of sickly. And I ended up not selling any of these because I was just, they just did not look good. They looked like they had some kind of a fungus, almost like blight, but it, it, I don't think it was blight, but they just were not good. Um, but I planted it anyway, and it's, it's not even, it doesn't even have one of these tough cages around it like all these other ones do. This is the Texas tomato cages, so those are the, the cages that I've been using every year. And they are really strong, and they fold up, and I just love them. But anyway, I didn't have any more of those, so I have this one around just a, a regular tomato cage, but it's a little bit taller than my other tomato cages that I have, so it goes up to close to five feet. But anyway, it seems to be doing really well um, over here and it's loaded with tomatoes. It did have a little bit of a problem with some splitting. So if you don't harvest them soon enough, they will split on you. Um, they're very firm though, which is surprising that they split because they're so firm. Um, they don't have a lot of seeds. So they're, I guess, pretty good for, for sauce tomato, but they're also good for just fresh eating too. Not a spectacular sweet flavor on this one, um, but I do like how productive it is and it's not bad. These next three tomatoes are all kind of similar looking. Now, they all three taste very, very differently. My most favorite is the, the pink princess here. And I think this cracks the easiest, unfortunately, but this one has a really, really great flavor. It almost tastes a little bit salty. I like putting salt on my tomatoes and this one really doesn't need it because it almost tastes like it's already got salt on it. It's really flavorful and sweet. I just really like the taste of this one. This one is probably the second favorite of the two as far as taste goes. And this one is, it's not, it's got a few different sized tomatoes, but it's, I think it's the most productive. Might be a little bit smaller, but look at all the tomatoes on this this branch here. Lots of tomatoes. And then the last one here has probably the, the thickest skin of all of them and the least flavorful. It's very bland, um, not very tasty at all. It's also very firm. I think it's supposed to be a really good storing tomato, so it'll probably sit on your counter without spoiling for the longest, which is a nice feature, um, but I'm not thrilled about the flavor. As far as productivity, I think this is probably the, the least productive. And then these other two, it's probably a tie because they're both really loaded with tomatoes and they've grown beyond the top of the tomato cages. So the last of the tomatoes that I'm growing this year is called Spoon. 
which is the smallest variety I've ever grown. This is a, I believe it's called a current type tomato. So it's very tiny. This is probably one of the, <laughs> the bigger ones, um, but it's really kind of tedious to harvest these because they're so small and they do tend to split quite easily as well. And honestly, I don't think they taste that great, even though I've heard other people say they have really good flavor or they taste really good, but I wasn't too thrilled with the flavor. So most of these are just going to the chickens. Let's see who wants one. Molly wants one. Who wants another one? Ouch. Watch those fingers. I almost forgot about the tomatoes I have here growing in hanging baskets. I've got one here and I've got the same variety growing over here. This one gets a lot more sun, so it requires watering a lot more. Um, the tomatoes do split a little bit if you don't harvest them in time. Uh, but this one is called Garten Pearl and it is designed for hanging baskets, so it kind of cascades and stays really small. So it's considered a, I think, micro dwarf tomato. So it's perfect for any kind of container and it seems to be pretty productive as well for being such a small plant. Um, but it, I don't know, it, it, it has pretty good flavor, um, especially for a hanging basket tomato. I, I think I like the tumbling tom that I grew last year in the hanging baskets better. Um, I had a red one and a yellow one. So I think I'll go back to that variety if I grow in a hanging basket again or if you know of any good hanging basket tomato varieties, let me know and I'd be happy to try them. All right, that is it for the tomatoes in the garden this year. If you have any suggestions for varieties I should try next year, let me know and I'll see if I can find some seeds. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook.